favorites, but I'd root for him. <laughs> um, hey, God has been here this morning, and um, you know, it, it's uh, always amazing just to see God intervene, and I, I wish you could, you know, put God in a can and uh, just kind of pull him out, uh, kind of a deal, and, and, and in other words, what I mean by this is like, you know, some of the experiences and things that we have where we just sense God's presence in a real way, I mean, give me some more of that, you know, I, wanna, I want that, and I want it right, right now, um, but as we worship God, uh, there's something special that, that happens, and I hope that you have sensed that this morning. Um, South County is here to bring freedom to this city. South County is here so that you can get full of him and bring freedom to your family and bring freedom to your neighborhood and bring freedom to that workplace and bring freedom to your school. That's why South County is here. And so as we increase the personal freedom that we have uh, in worshiping our God and God kind of sheds the stuff off of us, brings freedom to us, freedom from disappointments. I'll even throw debt in there. As God brings freedom to your life from debt, he's already brought freedom to your life from sin debt, right? So money as well, that kind of debt, um, as God brings more and more freedom to your life through his church, through his people, right? Um, there's something powerful that begins to happen. And so why do we go to a Monopoly tournament? Isn't that kind of close to gambling? Do they have tattoos too? I mean, I mean, we can make anything legalistic or whatever. The reason we go and we're part of the Monopoly tournament, sure, is to care for our community, but it is to bring the freedom of Christ to our community. It is to bring freedom to every table there as people are facilitating as their bank managers or whatever you want to call it at each table, you are representing Christ in your community. What other opportunity would you have to do something like that? And it's something that we've done for a number of years. Every community event, every connection, all those things matter. Every connection that you have with your family, every connection you have with your boss, every coworker, every student, student's that you interact with, every teacher that you engage with, when you ask the Lord to be in your life, you are bringing freedom to your classroom, freedom to your office space. That's our God. And that's why we do what we do. And so I'm excited about the freedom that God is going to continue to bring as we pursue him this year. There is hope in our God. There is hope in your life. And we're going to look at that a little bit this morning as we continue to unpack lamentations and how devastating it was. It was devastating because people had turned away from God. They had known better. Have you ever known better? Have you known better at times but done the wrong thing? Oh, the list, right? That all of us have in our lives where we knew better. We knew better. I can think of so many stories off the top of my head without thinking very hard. I can think of a camp out, the hours camp outs that we used to have and there'd be all these tents and no one would get any sleep because all the brothers were snoring. Now I'd be snoring with them, so says Cindy. Right? And so this camp out, and we're setting up and everything, well, we're kicking the ball around, and the ball went up in the tree, and it was way up there. And so I found a rock, and I thought, my 24-year-old self, I got this. And I began to throw this rock up in this tree, thinking, surely I'm going to hit this ball, and I'm going to get this ball out. Hero. Right? And so I begin to throw this rock up, and I probably threw that rock up 25 times. Couldn't hit that ball. And Cindy kind of gives me this little nudge. 
right? A little nudge like, hey, um, Andy, be careful. In other words, stop. And I'm like, no, no, listen, I, I almost got it. I was so close the last time. I got it. So I'm taking this rock, and I throw that rock up, and I felt on the release that I'd gone just a little bit too far. Right? I, I, I threw it, and instead of releasing here, I kind of released back about here. And that thing went sailing up, and my heart sank as I knew that the world was about to change as I knew it. And I'm watching that rock come down, and it comes through the window of a canopy on the back of a truck, hits the back of the truck, dents the truck. Oh, man. I knew better. I knew better. But I thought, oh, just one more time. I'm good. I can think of hundreds of times, unfortunately, where I knew better. Maybe you can. Maybe you can too. We knew better, but we did differently. We had to pay the consequences for that. And that's what happened in the book of Lamentations. That's what happened with the people of Judah. They ignored God. They ignored God. The Lord said, worship me only. Have no other images before me. And they continued to make shrine after shrine, idol after idol. Shrine prostitutes at the temple. All these things, God won't notice. It'll be okay. We're going to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars today, but it's going to be okay. God's all right with it. They knew better, but they had been influenced by those around them, and so they began to increase their worship. And then more people began to worship the wrong things, and more people had idols, and Then some began to sacrifice their children in the fire to a god named Moloch. It's disgusting, right, to think about. It's harsh when you think about how could could things have gotten that bad? Surely there had to have been somebody telling the people this is not right. The voice of Cindy Who was it? It was Chaplain Brown who said, the longer he lives this life, the more the Holy Spirit sounds like his wife. (laughs) (laughs) There was a voice. It was Jeremiah, and Jeremiah was constantly telling the people, there's going to be serious consequences. Don't go this way. Worship the Lord your God. Worship him only. There's going to be consequences. And they continued to ignore like we do at times, where we ignore the voice of God in our life. We ignore his word and we think, I've got this, God. And there's consequences to having our own way and turning against God. And that's what we see happen here. And that's why we have this devastation to read in the book of Lamentations, where Jeremiah has just got this long lament. Things are really really bad. They're horrible here. But then we see a little turning in chapter 3. We see a little turn that we should take notice of. That there really is hope even in the devastation. That in the midst of your chaos, anyone have any chaos today? Yeah, you're like, yeah, here are their names. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Chaos in your life. Things that are going on. And Jeremiah says, in the midst of that chaos, there is still hope in our God. Our God is still faithful. He still will answer. But it'll be in his timing. He has not forgotten you. So the big idea is God is faithful throughout all the chaos of life. He's faithful throughout all the chaos of life. And here we are in Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 18, we read, 
So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. Straight up misery, okay? That's what that's talking about. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is in the midst of your chaos. He is faithful in the midst of your chaos. When everything seems miserable, when you are downcast, our God is there. And just because he is silent does not mean that he is not ready to act either. God is with you. He's with you. And even though things at times will crumble around you or there'll be chaos around you, the Lord is still there with you in the midst of it. So what do we do when life has us down? Because we're all there sometimes. We're all there at some point in life where we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. Something has happened, something that has brought us our attitude, our, our feelings. I mean, sometimes our feelings are all messed up. We've all been there at some place where you're all messed up inside. Your feelings are off. And so what do we do when life has us down? The first thing is this, is we get real about where we are, but we don't stay there. We get real about where we are, but we don't stay there. Birdie and Eggly, so good to see you. Right back at you. Glad you guys are here. <clears throat> we get real about where we are, but we don't stay there. We've all gone into the mall and... We have no clue where we are, right? And so what do we look for? We look for this kind of triangular thing or, or whatever. It's this directory that tells us the map of the entire mall. And we go up to it and, and sometimes we're, I mean, we're, we're all like, what is that? But what we're looking for is a spot on there that says, you are here. Thank God, I know where I'm at. You are here. You're, you're right here. How? Oh. And then you start looking around and you recognize, oh, well, there's that store there and there's that store there. I finally know where I'm at. I finally know. You are here. And so there's times when we need to get real, and this is where Jeremiah did. He, he got real about this is where we are. He's lamenting over where they are. He's explaining this is our current reality. He took the time to lament. And so we read, so I say, this is verse 18, my splendor is gone and all that I'd hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them and my soul is downcast within me. This moment of you are here. Jeremiah declared it. This is, this is our reality. This is where things are right now. My soul is downcast. I am depressed. This is where I'm at right now. A great friend of mine has a sign over his office that says it is what it is. It is what it is. In other words, this is where I'm at. 
The good, the bad, the ugly, this is the circumstances, this is the reality that's there, this is where I'm at. And there's something about declaring this is where you are that certainly helps you get to the destination you need to get to. And so declaring that, whether it's I'm in debt, I'm full of greed, I'm full of worry, I'm depressed, I'm lonely, I'm lost, I'm hurting, hurting, I'm addicted. There is something about getting real about where you are so that you can move forward. This is where I'm at. It's messed up right now, but this is where I need to go. And this is where Jeremiah, he starts. This is where we are. It's, it's not good. It's not good. I don't know where that is for you today or where your, you are here is today. Oftentimes, we're in denial about where we are. <laughs> Walking into the mall, I got this. I know Cindy said to meet me there. I know where that's at. I don't recognize anything around me, but let's just walk. Let's just drive, right? We'll just, let's just drive. We'll see something eventually. 20 minutes later, I have no idea where I'm at. Sometimes we're in denial when we need to get real about where we are so that we can move forward. So what do we do when we're down? When life has us down, we have to get real, but it's really just a moment so that we can move forward, so that we be can become free, so that we can receive the healing, that we can take the next steps to move us forward. What do we do when life has us down? We focus on the faithfulness of God. We focus on the faithfulness of God. What we focus on in this life is so important. I'll say it again. What we focus on in this life is so important. Sometimes we wonder, why am I feeling this way? And we have to look at what we've been feeding ourselves Because oftentimes it is a great contributor to how we feel. I can remember running. And I joined the gym in 2005, and the whole purpose of joining the gym in 2005 was so I could eat whatever I wanted. <laughs> Have you ever been there? You're like, I'm joining the gym so that I can eat what I want. Because that, those milkshakes are awesome, Okay. It's the same as true in our thought life. What are we feeding ourselves? Why do I feel like I can't run today? <sighs> what have you been eating? Why, do, why are we downcast within ourselves? Why do we have no hope? What are we feeding ourselves? What we put into our, our minds, what we feed on, definitely affects what we think about. What we think about. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Another translation says it determines the course of your life. What are you feeding yourself? We have all these internal thoughts that are going on, but if we are feeding on trash, we can oftentimes draw a connection. Well, I'm watching the news all the time. How many news junkies out there? Just be free. <laughs> Growing up, my dad would always have the news on, and I'm thinking, what is wrong with him? Now I'm that guy. You know, why isn't he listening to the latest tunes? He's listening to the news. Why? I want to be informed. Sometimes we have to turn it off. 
because it definitely affects what goes on inside of us. And see, Jeremiah chose to guard his heart. He chose to focus on the character of God. He chose to focus on the faithfulness, the faithfulness of God. Lamentations 3, 21 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Psalm 43, 5 says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. See the shift? So even if you're watching the news and things, maybe there is just a time to turn it off, but then remember there is always hope in our God. Our God is always faithful. Our God leads leaders. Our God is in control. He's never stepped away. He's there. The turn, the change, the difference that we see here. We used to sing a song years ago. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. An oldie but a goodie. Great is thy faithfulness. 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 This is our God. He is faithful. And so we see this turn that happens in Jeremiah where he turns to the Lord and his character that his compassions fail not. Great is his faithfulness. It was true then. It was true in the 80s. It was true in the 90s. Oh God, it's true now. Great is thy faithfulness. This is our God. We focus on him. We choose to focus on the character of our God that no matter what happens that we don't like and there will be plenty. Things happen, but we focus on our God, we focus on our God, and then what happens when we recognize that everyone is in, God, in God's control, we begin to relax, because great is thy faithfulness. God, you are great, you are great, and you lead leaders. You think, oh, Pastor Andy's going all political now. I'm reading behind the lines, Pastor Andy. Probably not. But great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. He is true. What do we do when life has us down? We wait on the Lord. We wait on the Lord. Who likes to wait here? No one, right? I mean, is there anybody right now that likes to wait? You, I mean, you love to wait in lines. I was in 
Walmart the other day. <clears throat> I was trying to fix something. I was overcharged just a little bit, you know, and it was like 20 bucks. And uh, I'm standing in line, and there's probably eight people in front of me, and there's one person working uh, where I needed to get my refund. And I waited about 10 minutes, something like that, and about four people in front of me, this guy just starts going off. <clears throat> Upset. What's going on in here? We're here waiting. I've been waiting 25 minutes. You're not moving fast enough. You have no help. I left. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sticking around here. We don't like to wait by nature. We don't. Lamentations 3.24 says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. We don't like to wait, but God expects us to wait on him. He expects us. We live in this society where we want everything right now. I want my app right now. Said every student. I want my song right now. I want my refund right now. I want everything right now. And with God, we have to wait and we have to trust. Sometimes it happens right now. Isn't that great when it does? Woohoo! Don't you feel good? You prayed the prayer and the money came. <laughs> Boom! You're celebrating. And then there's the other time. You prayed and you waited. And you waited. And you're like, oh God, it's due. The bill is due tomorrow. Hello? God, do you see me here? And then God comes through. But you had to wait. Oh. I know you feel that with me. Sometimes we pray and we have to wait because God has a timing that we cannot see. We have to trust him. We don't like to wait, but God expects us to wait. And to wait is this, to look expectantly for, to look eagerly for, anticipating the answer. It's kind of like, I remember hide and seek. Do you remember hide and seek? Yes. Nice. I heard my great friend there. I won't mention her name because she'll cave on me. Hide and seek. And so you're hiding. And you're looking. And you know the person's coming. I mean, you're, you're waiting for them, right? You're anticipating and you're trying to do it, whatever you can to, to kind of stay out of sight. But you're looking, you're watching, you're waiting. It's a small example of what God is looking for for us. An active waiting, not a sit on the couch, give me the remote kind of waiting. But an anticipation, an eagerness. I have given this to God and I am waiting on him to bring salvation. I am waiting on him to bring healing. I'm waiting eagerly because I serve an awesome God. I serve a God who heals. I serve a God who answers. I serve a God who blesses. This is our God. Great strength comes in actively waiting on God. Isaiah 40 says this, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
Other translations talk about trust. They actually switch the word wait with trust. Trust in the Lord, hope in the Lord. Little side note on your bulletin, Isaiah 49, 23, the latter part of it says, those who trust in me will never be put to shame. This is our God. We wait on him. And the promises of God are so amazing because, look, even when the Lord is angry, it says it's short. Psalm 30, verse 5, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes with the morning. This is our God. Even when you might be experiencing some correction like we talked about last week, oh, that was a favorite, huh? Sometimes there's correction that comes, but even in that correction, his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. This is the promises of our God. This is awesome. He loves you. And he's here today. He's here today. He's with us today. What do we do when life has us down? Additionally, we live with expectation. We've already touched on this a little bit with waiting. Waiting quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the rescue of God. Oh, he loves you. Oh, he loves me. Isn't that an amazing promise of our God? He loves us. And so then we live with expectation. And my challenge this morning is, do you live with expectation? Do you live with expectation? Do you expect the Lord to save you? Do you expect the Lord to answer? Sometimes we need to change our position Sometimes we need to get around others who are expecting God to answer. When we don't have any in ourselves, when you're struggling in your, in your expectation or your faith, you need to come to church. Check. You're here, right? You're here. Get around others who are expecting God. And that's what's so exciting about coming together and worship is they have people here today expecting God to show up expecting God to act, expecting God to heal, expecting God to lift spirits, expecting God to bless, expecting God to direct our lives, to live with expectation. Just because God is silent doesn't mean he is not here. I'll say it again, just because God is silent does mean that God doesn't mean that God is not here or God doesn't even that not that he doesn't want to act he wants to act on your behalf his timing is perfect his ways are perfect this is our god this is our god and he is faithful he that began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it do you believe it Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Being confident, he will. God, I, I expect you to keep working in me. I expect you, God, to lift my spirit. I expect you, God, to bring the change in my finances. I expect you, God, to bring the change in my boss or to change me. I expect you, God. Living with expectation, knowing that God is working on you in every environment that you live in. Every hat that you wear. As mommy, as dad, as coworker, Whatever, whatever hat that you wear, knowing that he is working in you, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you 
will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. There is great hope in our God. Church, there is great hope in our God. Do you believe it today? Great hope in our God. I don't know all that's going on in your life today. I know little pieces of your life. I don't know the chaos, every little bit of it. You know, sometimes we, we just show little snapshots of our life on Sunday morning, don't we? And sometimes we're, we're like, oh, they, they, don't, they don't really want to know. How you doing? Good, good. Great. Everything's great. And over here inside, it's that... <sighs> hoping and praying that God shows up in a powerful way in your life today. On the outside, we are so good. And I grew up in a home that we were great at showing that everything was wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Everything's great. No, I'm good. But sometimes, just like maybe you today, there was a, God, I don't know if I can stand much more internally. I don't know where you are today, but I know we serve a God who answers. A God that we can be so hopeful in his character that great is his faithfulness, that he is faithful and his compassions fail not. They never fail. His compassions, he knows where you are and what you're going through. And I can think of so many scenarios. I can think of conversations with single moms out in the hallway. I can think of a conversation with a single mom and she was just, it's so hard. God, it's so hard. Where do you need God to intervene in your chaos today? Where do you need him today? The Lord is here. The Lord wants to answer. The Lord wants to show you that he loves you, 